hours. <laughs> but it's good to be back in Chicago. Good to be back at, uh, at Jet. It's good to have you here. Thank you. And so, you know, we know you've been very busy. And, of course, you have another album coming out. Is this your sixth album? This is my fourth solo studio album. I've done a few live albums, too. And uh, I did a collaboration album with The Roots as well. So, uh, you know. I don't know how you count, but uh, this is my fourth solo studio album. Gotcha. Yeah. Love in the future. Yes. So what can fans expect? Well, um, they can expect uh, me, you know, the artist that I've been for them. Uh, uh, I haven't really changed in that sense. My essence is really the same. But, um, you know, we wanted to continue to progress and, uh, and continue to take our sound forward. And so I work with some of the best producers that I, I know and that I uh, respect as producers, like Kanye, Hit Boy, Bink, 88 Keys, Dave Tozer, uh, the interns, uh, all of these are great producers that helped me craft the sound for the album. And um, and uh, I feel like this is my best work yet. Awesome. Now I know you mentioned Kanye, of course. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he kind of produces in a different capacity. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, I think, um, uh, I said something last week on the radio where it kind of caught up a lot of people's ears, but it really wasn't that uh, controversial of a thing to say. He doesn't really physically make a lot of the beats as much as he used to anymore. Uh, he's more um, kind of uh, a producer in the classic sense where he brings in different musicians to help craft the sound, but he still uh, is the overall leader of creating that sound and has the vision. And so he's still producing in that classic sense, but not necessarily you know, right. actually doing all the beats himself. Right, he still has the ear, so. Yes, absolutely, he still has the ear, he still has the vision, and he actually has worked more on this album uh, as far as just crea creating, writing, and uh, and helping with the vision than he's worked on any of my albums. So I really appreciated his energy, his time, his creative passion, and uh, I think the album is better for it. Awesome, and of course, single, Who Do We Think You Are? Yes, the single, Who Do We Think You Are? We are um, it was originally produced by Bink. It was co-produced by uh, Kanye and Dave Tozer, and um, features Rick Ross, of course. And the video's coming out soon, right? Yeah, it's coming out like uh, in a few days. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Awesome. Now, of course, I have to go back to the whole Rick Ross yeah. thing. You know, um, mm -hmm. how do you feel about that situation? With the well, it was unfortunate. You know, it was unfortunate what he said, and um, he uh, was right to apologize for it. And uh, I think we can move on now, but. Uh, it's just, it's just a, you know, a lesson that you have to be careful what you say. You don't want to portray something as serious as rape in a way that makes people think you're making light of it or even s sort of encouraging it. Uh, you just can't do that. And, uh, you know, he made a mistake. He apologized, and now we're going to move on. Right, right. Yeah. And, you know, um, there's been this ongoing discussion about misogyny and hip hop. Yeah, you know, it's, you, it's prevalent. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. What what can you do to kind of, um, I guess, create a little bit more balance? Well, you know, everybody's got to make decisions uh, about what they want to support. You know, I think a lot of rappers feel like they're making this music because they feel like there's an audience that wants to hear it. So we all, as consumers and fans of rap, which I really am. We have to decide which kind of music we want to support, which songs you want to allow to be hits on your radio stations, and and which albums you're going to buy, uh, which artists you're going to support. And if you feel like uh, somebody's promoting a vision of women or anybody that you feel like you don't want to spend your money on, don't spend your money on it. Uh, and I bet you it'll go away fast uh, because I think people respond to consumers, they respond to the marketplace, telling them you know what they want to hear. That being said, I don't want to censor rap because I think part of what we love about hip hop in general is that there's an element of danger to it. There's an element of breaking the rules and being rebellious to a degree. Uh, a lot of it is, you know, young guys in their, you know, late teens and early twenties uh, still trying to figure out who they are as people. And so you don't want to lose some of that energy from rap, but. Like I said, everybody has a right as a consumer to decide this is what I want to encourage by purchasing it, and this is what I don't want to encourage, so I'm not going to purchase it. So uh, we all have a role to play. Sounds like common sense to me. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, speaking of the roles that we play, you know, you're known for your humanitarian work. Yeah. Um, that being said, gun violence is another yeah. issue 
what what do we do? What do we? How can we kind of address the situation? I think there's a quite a few things. Um, well, one, you know, here in Chicago, there's certainly a serious problem in a lot of our neighborhoods right now, and it, it's of a different character than the the violence, you know, that kind of ca captured the nation's attention in Newtown because. A lot of it is ongoing, it's daily, people are getting shot. A lot of it has to do with gang violence uh, and people that are getting caught in the crossfire. Uh, and so we have to, um, as a society, offer better alternatives for our young people than for them to get involved in gangs. We have to have communities that support parents, that support our schools and do the right thing so that we give people uh, the foundation and the preparation they need to have an alternative to being involved in gangs. Uh, I don't think people grow up desiring uh, a criminal lifestyle, uh, grow up desiring to have a great chance of going to prison, uh, but a lot of times life kind of pushes them in that direction, and we need to have something in their life that's pushing them in another direction, and so they need alternatives. And then, uh, secondly, we do have to focus on gun control. Um, I've been reading and listening to a lot of stories about how gun control happened in Australia. They had had a, a raft of uh, mass shootings similar to the ones we've been having here in America. And then they decided we're not going to take it anymore. We're going to actually put in real gun control in our country and uh, drastically limit people's ability to get guns, uh, institute real background checks, take assault weapons off uh, the market, all these things that our politicians are afraid to do. and. They s haven't had a mass shooting since then. Their murder rate went down significantly. Their suicide rate by, uh, by, uh, by, uh, by uh, firearms went down significantly. And their example shows that you can actually institute gun control that actually works if you want to. Right. And uh, right now, I don't think there's enough political will in our senators and our congressmen to do that. But we have to put pressure on them because we have to say enough is enough. We've seen too much killing in our neighborhoods. We've seen too many of these mass shootings that are taking, you know, uh, dozens of lives at once. Uh, you know, we just can't do it anymore. And uh, we, we, we need pol politicians with the courage to say this is, this is enough and we need to do what's right for our kids and not buy the gun lobby.